we're going to talk about tenant branding today, and that is the top bar in Microsoft 365. You can customize the logo in the top left here and the colors of this. And the logo in particular is something that when people go to do this, it looks weird nine times out of 10. So I want to give you some tips on how to make your logo actually look good in the top bar and how to set the colors. So first off, we are going to head to the admin center. So that is in the waffle launcher under admin. Notably, you do need to be a global administrator in order to change these settings. So work with IT if you don't have global administrator access to get this done. It's under show all and then go to settings, org settings, organization profile on the right, and then click on custom themes right here. So this is gonna look a little bit different depending on whether or not you already have a custom theme. If you already have one, you're gonna have a default theme record here that you can click on to edit. If you don't have this, I'm gonna delete mine so you can see what it looks like. You're just gonna click on add theme instead. And when you add a theme, the theme that you add is going to be your default theme. You have a couple of settings you can check here if you want to, I'm going to leave those off. And then under logos is where you add the logo. So this is the part that is a little bit tricky. If you just drop your logo in here, what happens is usually it's going to take up the entire height of the top bar and you don't want that. So when designers make logos, they usually make them in a way where the logo takes up the entire canvas. So they crop it right down to where the letters and the icons start. And that's what's causing it to take up the entire space. Microsoft doesn't add padding around the logo. So you need to add your own padding. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use Microsoft Paint because it's accessible and everybody has it, but you can use a real design tool too if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Paint in the start menu. If you don't see it, just search for the word Paint. And then we're going to open from the file menu our logo. So the important thing about these logos, you want to use a PNG file. PNG files are the file type that supports transparency. If you are working with a JPEG, you might end up with a background that's white or black or whatever the background happens to be, and it won't match your top bar color. So try and get something that is a PNG. SVG will work too, but my problem with the SVG files, it's really hard to get the size to be something that Microsoft 365 will take. So I'm just going to use a PNG because we have options for reducing the size on those. So I'm just going to pick my logo here. That's this one. The checkered background means that it's transparent and mine is white. So you can see that the top and bottom of the logo fit exactly with the edge of the canvas. And that's what I'm talking about, where if we use it as it is, it's going to take up the entire bar height and it looks weird. So we just need to add some padding. So you can just click and drag the top side and the bottom side of the canvas to expand it. And that's not skewing the proportions at all. It's just expanding the canvas size. And as far as dimensions go, if we go back and look at the settings in Microsoft 365, they have a little help page here. You can open this and look at it and they say that it's going to fit 200 by 48 pixels. But what's really important is more the height and making sure you're not over the width that they allow. And actually, if you use something that's the exact size that they recommend here, it's gonna be blurry depending on what your DPI on your images. So I actually like to about triple the size that they're going with here for the file and then let the platform scale it back down for me. So that would be 600 by 144 as the max. And I'm just going to use the height in here. So if we look at the size right now, it's 900 by 400. So we want to scale this down. The button for this is kind of in a weird place. It's under this image menu. And then it's this icon, which doesn't have a label on it when you have on it, which is very helpful. So resize and skew. So do you see this little linky icon? This is what keeps the aspect ratio, so keeps it from skewing. So you want to make sure this is selected, and then we're going to change it from percentage to pixels, and it tells us how big it is. So what we want to aim for is about 144 tall, and then we want to make sure that the width that is left is under 600, and mine is, so we're okay. The exact size of the horizontal doesn't matter as long as you're under whatever the maximum was, which in this case was 600. So let's click OK. So here's our image now. I'm going to zoom in. So another thing to check here is your file size. So you need to stay under 10 kilobytes. If you are over 10 kilobytes, you can use a tool called Tiny PNG. It's a free web tool that compresses PNGs. So this is how it works. If I take 
go to tiny, tinypng.com and then just drag and drop your file onto the window. So if I just drop my file in here and scroll down, it's reduced the size by 63%, so it's three kilobytes. I can download this PNG file. If you're over 10, this will probably get you under. So we can export this. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we need to choose the proper file type here. So PNG is what we want to use. That's what's going to maintain the transparency that we have on the background. I'm going to save that, and then we're going to head back over to the admin panel. It wants to default to a URL for the logo. We're not going to do that. We're going to upload a file instead. You can use the URL option, but if you do that, you need to host the file somewhere that is accessible, that doesn't have authentication on it. So we're going to browse to the file we just created, and you get a preview of it here. The colors that it's previewing with are not your actual custom theme, so keep that in mind. It's not actually going to be white on light gray like this. You can specify an alternate if you want to for dark themes. This one only allows a URL, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to leave mine off since my theme is going to be dark and Anyways, and then you can add an on-click link if you want to. So like if you wanted when somebody clicks it to have it go to your public website, you could do that. So under colors, the big thing to look out for here is it really likes you to have an appropriate color contrast. This is for accessibility. So they want the text to be readable to people who have visual impairment. So the top bar color you can choose whatever you want to here. I would recommend not going too bright. So like don't go with yellow. It's just kind of overwhelming. But a light gray looks good. Any kind of like dark navy looks good. But go with your, your branding colors. So if you've got organizational branding, go with that. I'm going to go with kind of dark gray. And when you go to save this, don't actually click save. So this will kick you back to the main menu. You need to actually just click on the color again to close the color picker and you get back here. If you go with a light background, go with dark font, obviously, for the color contrast. The accent color, this is actually going to be what you get when you hover over the menus. So like this one here, these ones up here. So you can go with an accent color with that, or you can go with a shade that's slightly darker, slightly lighter than your navigation color if you want to. And then it gives you a little preview up here so you can see what you've done with your logo and click save when you're done and you're good to go. So this takes effect right away. So if I refresh this page, you should be able to see it. There it is. So a couple other tidbits about the themes, other parts of Microsoft 365 have their own custom themes. So like SharePoint, you can have custom themes that apply to SharePoint that are different. Those are gonna be for the content that's on the page, not the top bar, right? This is the tenant theme. So this is gonna apply in all of the different apps that you use in Microsoft 365. And you can actually add multiple if you need to. So the main use case for this would be like if you are a company that has acquired another company and you want both companies to have their own branding in their top bars, you can have multiple in here and you can set them to use security groups. Groups. So if you had a security group A for company A and security group B for company B, you could have them each have their own set of branding. So that's what that's for. I hope this was useful and have a great day.